Thanks for coming. Thanks for staying back. Uh, Thank you for making the film, sing that. <laughs> thanks for thanks for uh, and 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 for screening this. Actually, we had to turn people away. We were oversubscribed by quite a lot. Uh, we are thinking of maybe doing another screening uh, at a, at a later stage. But uh, by 4:45, it was about full already. Yeah. Um, we 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 want to kind of uh, do a pretty quick Q and A. Uh, so we'll get straight down to it. just one question from me, and then we'll open up. There are mics that will go around. Um, you know, when when if you have a question, just put your hand up. Uh, the mics will come around to you. Just say your name, and then ask your question. Very straightforward question, Singtat. Um, can you tell us the process and inspiration behind eventually making Lelaki Harapan Dunia Men Who Saved the World? Because it started with this newspaper article, and then this house that's upstairs, and then eventually the film that we see over seven years, something like that. Can you tell us? I don't think we have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> Spent four years <laughs> making this film. I, I don't know how to sum it up to one minute. Uh, right, I, I have always been interested in the uh, tradition of Angkat Rumah. Uh, I... I really like the value it, it, it brings. Um, as a kid, I saw it on TV. Uh, Mal Malik No, Mr. Malaysia. Uh, it was in an advertisement. If you guys are old school enough like me, you I think you will remember that commercial where he uncut a rumor. It's a sh shout talks uh, <laughs> commercial. Uh, very intrigued by the image of a bunch of people coming together to carry a house, not not a chair, but a, not, not not a table, but a house. And I've personally uh, I've done an Ankat Rumah project before, back in uh, the exhibition is upstairs, upstairs. Um, and also in the process of uh, making this film, I experienced it again. Uh, it's something I cannot describe with words because um, um, you you f you feel the energy of everyone coming together is so strong that and when when the house is being lifted up the i cannot tell you how you know people's expression on their face looking at you know it's almost like oh no we we, we come together and we we put in a little bit of effort each one of us and then we can move literally we can move mountains and and it's it's sad to see what's going on here in the country where a hey, this kind of values is not I don't see it anywhere anymore. So in response to that, um, with the idea of this image of people carrying a house, and uh, and I I want to tell something. I wanna I wanna make a film out of it. And um, yeah. Cool. Um, just a little bit of uh, background, um, you know, because it's upstairs. If you, some of you may not have seen the exhibition upstairs, but um, I believe in 2007, August 2007, Singtat kind of read a newspaper article. It was a New Straits Times article, and it was the story of this guy. Singtat, you want to tell the story? Yeah, yeah? <laughs> I forgot about the article. <laughs> so, um, always intrigued by this tradition, and then I saw this article, um, and it's about a, a farmer. Uh, who gathered uh, a bunch of people to carry his house for him nearer to his mother because his mother fell sick and um, and uh, he 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 had to take care of her but he he wouldn't want to leave his house behind because his house is his home and uh, there's a sentimental value there so he decided to move the entire house next to his mom all right I was quite touched by this story because I was also in researching about the uh, this whole tradition is I mean I, I, I went into the Malay architecture uh, and um, and then start asking myself a bunch of questions what 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 it means uh, what does it uh, mean by home a house a house is physical but where is home and uh, I don't know whether you guys um, feel this, but I feel extra patriotic when I'm away. I'm like, hey, introducing myself. I'm I'm uh, I'm la la la. I'm, I'm I'm from Malaysia, and I'm very proud of it. And and I'm, I I travel a lot with my 
previous film so uh and i i i felt like i'm i was an ambassador to the country and because not <laughs> any people still know about malaysian films in general outside of the country uh so from that kind of conversation from film conversation to what is malaysia so i did that a lot from country to country so coming home i i want to make something here and and, and this film is important for me cuz it's a film for us not though though it's a film that uh travel around but uh it means something for 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 you guys to come and watch it uh, um there's something i want to say and um and then the the film is pretty much quite uh it explains itself quite quite well i think so um um yeah cool thanks for that uh, maybe we'll invite you guys if you have any questions um because we can we can open it up immediately uh if anyone has any burning questions yep there's a mic going around maybe just now you mentioned before uh, just but as i want to know deeper uh, what do you want to convey in this film uh? <laughs> what's your message what's your message oh, no. No, I don't of course there's always a message. I, I don't want to spoon feed you but um it's a combination of many things. Uh there's a play of black and white, white house, black guy. Uh I don't know, I'm tired of people looking at being um being superficial, being um judgmental in this country, looking at skin colors. Uh it's a response to that as well. How sometimes like angkat rumah we gather we move a house and the spirit is so strong this gotong yung royong spirit is so strong but when some when when we are in a hurt it's quite dangerous as well if you don't ask questions if you just being led by the nose um it's quite dangerous is all in the film actually so um yeah cool any other um questions yeah there's one here you said earlier you said that you have attachment to the house why in the end did you burn down the house oh i don't have attachment to the house the farm no, no, i mean the the, the spirit <laughs> that you said you know the yeah. moving of the house the yeah. spirit yeah. why did you in the end so destroy the whole thing that that just no more you know the communal spirit you know mm -hmm. everything just gone to ashes mm -hmm. well i look at it in a in a positive way actually um i maybe it's a lesson for all of us uh once you destroy something there's always rebuilding so i don't see i don't stop there actually yeah Did he answer your question? No. <laughs> 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 I, I, look, I think it's a it's a conversation. Uh, this kind of engagement, I really like. Uh, uh, I, I would can really. I, can I like just kind of ask the question? Because uh, uh, I'm also interested in in, in that. But maybe, uh, Singta, I think I think the house as a device, right? Because uh, clearly, the house is a kind of device or a metaphor. Um, you know, with Project Angkat Ruma, which is being displayed up upstairs uh, in 2010, when you got all these strangers to come and move the house, you know, it was a source of Gotong Royong coming together, solidarity, a kind of strange anti-flash mob where like people just appeared because they thought the idea was interesting to move a house, right? But then, you know, four years later, when this film is made, um, the house has become something else. So, as a device, what you know, uh, what kind of changes did you kind of go through in terms of thinking about the house and oh this house can be a home but it can also be a source of conflict or i don't know it's actually very simple the saying goes like uh what brings us together can also tear us apart it's just based on that very thing and also um it's of course it's a fiction film and um i have to insert dramas in it 
And of course, the dramas make so much sense to the entire message that uh, I'm trying to tell through the house, through this, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, another question. Yeah, over there in the corner. Yes. Uh, hi, hi. Uh, my name is Jen. I actually paid money to go watch uh, this like long time ago. Unlike all these people here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> most of these people, most of these people. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, given that there was like uh, some controversy after the film came out, what would you have done differently with the film? Like, or would you have just done the exact same thing in retrospect? And uh, I want to ask, like, you know, uh, do you see any patterns with like uh, how different audiences receive the film? Um, yeah, so especially like you know, uh, rural Malay folk as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So the controversy. Some people call me a racist. Uh, uh, they wanted to ban the film, uh, and um, what else? They think I made fun of Islam, which is funny, <laughs> uh, because <laughs> because this this film played in. Of course, it is not my intention, but um, you see, years of making films, I learned something that. Uh, Negative feedbacks or good feedbacks, I take both uh, because I need to hear from my audience. I need to know what they think, and I want to know to what effect the the, the um, film is affecting the audience. Um, so it's like the film is quite ironic because um, if I were to make fun of the religion. Um, this film played in uh, Iran, uh, one of the most um, um, conservative Islamic country in the world. Uh, it, it was awarded there, um, and and the controversy. Um, no, I I wouldn't do things differently because um, whatever the controversy was all about is not true. But I, of course, I uh, it's my responsibility to respond to that as well. But um, this I will never self censor myself. Hey, P Patrick. <laughs> um, um, I think I I make this film with all good intention because um, I wouldn't be still making films if I don't have hopes. Um, um, and in an, I see things in a positive way. Uh, there are all sorts of. If you look at the film in a negative way, then of course everything is negative. So. Um, Saying that just really quickly, um, yeah. I, I think it's the kind of second part of um, his his question. <coughs> uh, what were like kind of surprising, interesting responses from oh audiences yeah. when you took it overseas? Um, It's quite strange because the more I travel with the film uh, from Asia to Europe to South America, um, it's actually quite similar. Uh, I think then I begin to see that uh, there is something universal in the film that um, uh, things that happen in the film happens in other communities as well. When you have a bunch of people together, uh, things like that bound to happen, but in a diff manifest in a different way, of course. Um, and um, and um, yeah, of course, uh, oh, oh wait, some people also blame me for being homophobic because one of the argument is how come there's no women in the in in the movie? So yeah, why? Huh? <laughs> um, because Uncle Ruma is a man's thing. Uh, um, the tradition is like that: um, man from the village will carry the house. After they have done with the moving. The women in the village will cook, and they will have a feast together. So, um, 
I think by focusing on men, by making fun of men, I'm making fun of men. Uh, so it's weird for people to blame me f for being, you know, uh, homophobic and exclude women in the film. But that's the point. Uh, I did it for a reason because I think men are stupid in many ways. Um, men receive the wolf. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, just just maybe as a as a kind of background to that as well. I think like. Um, you know, if if you have watched Sing Tat's uh, first film, Flower in My Pocket, um, which was made in 2007, it's a 10th anniversary. You know, there's an absent mother uh, in the film, which kind of like uh, drives, partly drives the film. And in, in this film, there's a kind of absent daughter, right? Uh, which is why the house is being bought and, and, and moved and all that sort of stuff, which kind of uh, drives the, the this this particular film. Um, and and you know if we kind of just zoom out over like uh, Malaysian film over the last few years, you know we've got films like Jagat, yeah, which was uh, which came out last year or the year before now, and films like Bunohan, Lucky Harapan Dunia, um, you know where like there really is an absence of uh, women in the films, um, but these are films that in many ways deal with violence. Uh, you know, different types of violences, you know, like Sengtad's dealing with it in a kind of much more humorous way. But certainly violence uh, and men and the kind of like uh, violence that they wreak in their communities and in, 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 in with the land and so on and so forth is very much a part of the film. And it's a kind of interesting trend, I just thought as that. Um, more questions, uh, people at the back, we know there are some Utah students in the house. In fact, there's a lot of Utah students in the house. Yep, over there, yep. Hi, uh, I'm Greeny uh, from Utah. Then yeah. I want to ask: Common, is, is it hard to work together with the other races like Malay to understand their traditional and culture? And do you mind to share? Why Chinese people don't move house one? <laughs> uh, Chinese people busy making money. Um, it's not that difficult. Uh, Provided the research is done properly, um, I don't want to. I don't want to make a film like a foreigner coming to this country. I want to make a Malaysian film and make the actors talk like we don't talk like this here. You know, I want to be inside. Uh, so, lots of research. Um, it's strange that people call me a racist because if you only come to visit me while well, I I should. Uh, on set with people, all, all these people behind the scene, the crew and everyone, the actors especially. It's so muhiba. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's like, wow, I'm enjoying myself so much here. This is Malaysia. Uh, how do you translate uh, muhiba? Uh, like multicultural. Yeah. Harmonious, yeah. yeah. Nice, good things. <laughs> One Malaysia, <laughs> very subtle Malaysia. There. So uh, no problems is at, at all. I think also because um, everyone believe in in the story, the script, and 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 um, and through the throughout the process, everyone enjoy uh, working. So and especially we cast a bunch of uh, villagers, those people that carry the. House, uh, mostly uh, people from the village, first time acting. I uh, had a difficult time controlling them, but it was okay. Um, um, even them, you know, I was worried because, like, how do you control 100 people, uh, um, not professional, and uh, this house carrying the sequence in the film? We only can afford to shoot it once. So we were shooting like with two cameras. And because of the foliage and the trees, once we move it, we bulldoze everything flat. So there's no turning back. <laughs> we can only do it once. Uh, and how do I control 100 people, extras, first time acting? There will be, you will bound to have people staring at the camera like, hey, I'm acting, hey. You know, like, then <laughs> I can't use that take. Then it's only one take, so, but uh, here's something very special that happened. 
uh, they knew that they were acting for the scene. They all came trying to act. But once action, they lift up the house and they were so en engaged with the act of moving house. They were like, whoa. And, and, and it became a mission for them to complete uh, the, the carrying from point A to point B. They were so engrossed with the action. And um, I saw it, I knew it because we did uh, Project Anka Roma in 2010. I, it, it, it's, it's, it's something very powerful, I don't know how to explain, but it affected the, act, uh, the extras as well. And, and, and they forgot about acting at the moment. They were so focused on carrying the house. Yeah. I think there's a question. Um, not so much of a question, it's just to... Um, I don't think that you are a racist, but I, but I think it's, the film has a very strong political statement yeah, about where our country is going, so... Yeah, so. well, um, yeah. of course. <laughs> uh, and... Um, um, I, tried, I, I try to make a film... Uh, I, I try to say something every time when I uh, I, I, I make a film, and um, I think I'm lucky because that's my job to make a film. But at the same time, I can express myself, uh, my anger, my dissatisfaction, my my joy, all combined in one. Um, yeah. Cool. Maybe last couple of questions, guys, and then we'll call it a wrap because uh, book of boss time. One over yeah. there. Um, just a quick one. So, so everyone here, you know, have in their head like there's a message in the movie. Like you even say that there's a message in the movie. You feel anger, whatever. Uh, is it okay if people don't see that message to you in your film? And then going back to the other part of the question is that when you screen the movie to those extras. Um, did they had a chance to see it, I assume? Like, did they had that, you know, whatever, the message that you intend? You know, were they looking at it from that point of view? Well, um, there's always two layers. Uh, the first layer is the entertainment layer. Um, and I'm okay for people to watch the film and enjoy it and bring home nothing. It's fine. Because uh, uh, films, to me, is still entertainment at the end of the day. But um, I try not to stop there. I want to make a film that, you know, convey something and that audience can bring home something, hopefully. So that is the second layer. If you stop at the first layer, it's fine. Yeah, I, I don't really mind. Yeah, and I think- Did you guys enjoy the film? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. No pressure, guys. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> uh, just we'll take the last one over yeah. there. Oh, yeah. um, I was wondering whether you intentionally chose to cast rural Malay folk who have never acted before in film, because I feel like with performing arts generally, especially in Malaysia, there is a barrier in a way. I think of it as very like middle class, like very targeted at the middle class, upper class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I work with non-actors a lot. Uh, this is actually my first time working with professional actors. The main ensemble, they are all professional actors. Um, of course, some of them, <laughs> they came with baggage. Right. Um, I have to slowly take all that off. Um, you, you guys know Sophie Jikan. He's known for being very <laughs> big, larger than life. And um, I have to really, really, really press him down and like no acting, no acting until it, it has to be very um, subtle. Uh, and um, because, because I know that uh, we're gonna cast a bunch of uh, non-actors, uh, normal people. So with professional actors coming in, you will, tell the difference that, oh, they are actors and they are not. And it might not do, uh, it might not, because it has to be a community that I'm, sh I'm, I'm showing here. So they, they have to be like a normal villager. Everyone's the same. Um, um, I don't know, but the, the, the villagers 
uh, here's something very interesting. When I make them cross dress, I was a bit uh, afraid that you know, grown grown ass men uh, never uh, like they never perform before. They come from a village. I assume they mind uh, doing that, um, and um, of course I try to communicate with them uh, about <laughs> what they are, they they sign uh, they, they they sign for they sign they sign up for. Um, but uh, <laughs> they really enjoy cross-dressing, I don't know why. <laughs> they do. Like, before every take, they were enjoying themselves and they were taking pictures and they were like, I'm like, uh, you guys, your wives know about this? <laughs> I, be I bet not. But they, they are really enjoying uh, the process. Uh, even I made them <laughs> cross-dress and do silly things, putting on makeup. They really enjoy it. Yeah. Cool. Just um, last question from me. Um, Saying that you took seven years to make uh, the Lucky Harapan Dunia. Um, 2014, 2007 was your first film, Flower in My Pocket. What are you working on next? Is it going to be another seven years before we see another <laughs> no. film from you? <laughs> no. Uh, my next film is called The Girl with No Head. Um, it's a cross genre film. Uh, what does uh, that mean? Uh? <laughs> it's a there's a com it's a combination of a uh, thriller, l love, <laughs> ro romance. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I find it funny <laughs> already. Uh, drama, uh, a little bit of musical in there, uh, and of course there will be comedy for sure. Uh, um, there will be some Japanese gangsters. Um, because there will be a girl with no head. Um, uh, the, the bunch of blind people in there. <laughs> There's a crazy person in there. Um, yeah. When does it come out? Um, are we going to shoot next year? Uh, so we're talking about 2019 to be released in 2019. So I'm very excited about the film. So mm, go watch it when it's on. Cool. We look forward to seeing it. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. And please join me in thanking Liu Seng Tat.